Hey everybody, Chris Gill here. We are continuing our video series on mixing a song start to finish using only the free plugins that come with Studio One. Let's jump in. Bass guitar. When I was first mixing, bass guitar was just like the thorn in my side continually. I, I never knew how to EQ it right. I had a hard time compressing it. Uh, it was either too fat or too thin, never loud enough, too loud. So. Let's take a look at what I've got going on processing wise in this song uh, that will hopefully help you avoid some of the issues that I ran into early on in my mixing career. So anytime I am finished mixing drums, I immediately move on to the bass guitar. And the reason is the drums kind of set the overall tone of the whole mix, right? With cymbals, they have the highest highs and the lowest lows, you know, highs being the cymbals, lows being the kick drum. Bass guitar has to also fit into that super sub low end. And if that bass guitar and that kick drum are really working together, then I know I've got a good foundation for a mix. So let's take a listen to the drum processing uh, we've got so far. And let's also listen to uh, the bass guitar without any processing and see what kind of observations we can make. All right, so so right away, uh, the first thing I noticed is I had to gain this up almost uh, 10 dB uh, above what I had it set to even be able to really like hear it in compared to the drums. And it's not because there was really a gain problem there. I mean, uh, I was able to, to push that up at zero and the level was coming in right about zero. So it's not a gain problem. That immediately tells me we kind of have some, a frequency issue to deal with. So let's take a look at uh, what we've got going on uh, processing wise. So the first thing I noticed hearing that track, we're going to need more presence. We've got to get that thing to co uh, compete with the snare drum, compete with those cymbals. We've got to give this thing some low end energy to compete with that kick drum. So how do we do that? The first thing we've got on here is the saturation plugin. If you've watched any of the other videos, you know that I love this plugin. Um, and whereas on the other tracks, I've used it kind of starting at about one, I have this set quite a bit higher. We're, we're looking at like three, 3.1. Um, and the reason that is, bass guitar does not have a bunch of those high frequencies that's going to cause this thing to distort. So we can we can drive it a little bit harder before it starts to break up uh, and still have it sound pleasing and, and give uh, a lot of those really nice uh, harmonics to the sound. So let's look at next the fat channel. All right, so I have this kind of in an expanded view so we can see all the processing we've got going on here. But let's let's start over here with this high pass filter. 45 hertz. You just said we needed low end on the bass guitar. Why in the world would you roll off 45 hertz? Well, that kick drum is really already occupying those super sub low ends. When that kick drum hits, you know, those the subwoofers, uh, I'm talking as if we're playing this through a giant sound system. Those subwoofers are already hitting, right, with those super sub low ends. If the bass guitar is, you know, really rolling along in the song and it's already occupying all of that low end, that kick drum has nowhere else to go. It can't, it can't, be louder than the bass guitar that's already occupying all of those frequencies. So by rolling off a little bit of that super sub low end on the bass guitar, we're given some breathing room for that kick drum. It's a little trick I've, I've learned that it seems to work really well. Next up is this EQ, the, the vintage EQ. If you've ever used or looked at any of the Waves plugins, Slate Digital, um, Apollo, uh, Universal Audio Apollo plugins, you know that this is a recreation of the Neve uh, EQ. And if you've ever used any of those, you know that this EQ is incredibly aggressive. So if you know that and know that, yeah, we'll go with that. There's, oh man. Okay. If you've ever used any of those, you're looking at these settings and you're thinking I have lost my mind. Okay. You know that these are drastic, drastic moves, but let's talk about what we're doing here. So we've rolled off 45 Hertz. Our first move here is at 60 Hertz. So 45 hertz, 60 hertz isn't that far away from 45 hertz. What we are doing is we are we are rolling that sound off, but we are creating a little bump right before it rolls off. And so because we're doing that, we can give this quite a bit more juice than I would uh, if we were not using a high pass filter. So we are giving this to really round out that bottom end. 1.6K, this is right where that finger pluck sits. So when the bass player uh, plucks that string, that's right where that attack sits. And that's gonna help that really cut through the mix. Got a little bit more boost at uh, 3.2K. I felt like it needed just a little bit more presence than the, the 1.6 was giving it. And then this final move, uh, this is a shelf that sits kind of at about 12K. I'm rolling off just a tiny bit of that high end just to make sure that we're not getting too much high end energy going on uh, that's gonna compete with the uh, guitars later on that we're gonna mix. So let's just listen to that EQ 
uh, and see what kind of a difference uh, we're, we're getting in the track here. So let's move this all the way over here and let's give this a listen. Yeah, that, that sounds so much better. Uh, that that mid-range is really gonna help that cut through the mix. Um, in another video, I had mentioned that uh, when we were first starting off uh, with our mix bus processing, the mix sounded like it was right here in the, in the front of the face. It was real nasally sounding. Um, or not nasally sounding, but the, those frequencies made it sound like it was just kind of sitting right here in front of your face instead of off to the sides. Those mid-range frequencies between like 900 hertz and probably like two and a half K make the sound sound make your track sound like they are sitting right up the center of the mix. Anytime you add those kind of frequencies, those are what are going to bring that sound to the center of the mix. Anytime you cut those frequencies, that's what's going to push sound to the side of your mix. And again, you don't have to be drastic with it. A little bit sometimes goes a long, long way. So let's look next at uh, the compression. What are we doing here? I am using the tube comp. This is like a recreation of an LA-2A. It is super smooth, super buttery, works fantastic on bass guitars. It has a pretty quick uh, attack time, and it just it's just magic. I mean, there's like really no other way to describe it. So um, let's play this track again from uh, the same spot. Watch the needle. Watch how much gain reduction we're actually able to get on this thing and still have that bass guitar sound sound really nice. All right, so somewhere between seven and 10 dB of gain reduction, that's huge. Bass guitars can handle it. It is a big boy, it can handle the abuse, right? So bass guitars, for, for whatever reason, anytime I'm mixing, I'm I'm not afraid to really slam those with a compression. Um, they it, they just seem to take it really well. Um, it adds a lot of uh, character to the bass guitar. Um, it brings up a lot of that mid-range tonality. Um, also, and I don't really have a problem with this bass guitar because this was recorded fairly well, but a lot of times with bass guitars, if they're not recorded through a compressor or through a console, they're just straight DI and they record, you get a lot of those peaks and valleys. Sometimes your dynamic range of your bass can, you know, be 12, 13 dB apart, um, and it can sound, you know, when they're really quiet, uh, you can barely hear it in the mix, and then all of a sudden they're like slamming away on the chorus, and now you're just getting blown away. A compressor can really help tame those dynamics, allow you to bring that whole level up in the mix, and overall it's going to sound better. Again, this didn't really need that, but I, what I really found with this particular compressor is when I started really cranking up the gain reduction on that, uh, it was really bringing out some of that sub-low end uh, and a lot of that upper mid-range, which was really helping it cut through the mix. So let's listen to this whole thing. So far, with everything we've got going on, uh, I'm actually going to solo... I'm not gonna solo anything. We're gonna listen to this in the context of the mix. I'm gonna to toggle the processing we've done so far on and off so we can hear the difference. Yeah, a huge difference, night and day. I'm really liking how that's sounding. However, we're not done. I still feel like I need more low end, and I need a different kind of low end uh, than what that uh, vintage EQ was giving me. So for that, we are turning to this guy. I love this EQ. If you've watched any of the other videos on the master uh, main bus or the drum bus, you know that I love this thing for bus compression, especially the low end trick. And since we are dealing with an instrument that is pretty much low end, the low end trick works once again. So what do we have going on here? 30 hertz, slight boost, slight attenuation, fairly wide bandwidth on those uh, curves. What that is doing is giving us just a little bit of extra sub low end juice uh, to help round out the whole mix. So we're gonna solo up the bass track because um, that's what's gonna allow you to hear this the best. And let's play this and I'm gonna toggle this. Uh, let's start with it off and then I'll toggle it on so you can really hear what's going on. I mean, it's just, it's just like magic. It's, it's magic. And what you'll notice here, this does not take a whole bunch. And the reason is we've already done this on our main master bus over here, right? So this was just enough to the bass track to give it a little extra low end juice to round the whole track out. And now I think it really, really sounds 
uh, aggressive in your face. It's warmed up the whole track. I think it's going to sound great when the final mix is all said and done. Again, my name is Chris Gill. Do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel so you can get updates on future videos. We've got more coming very soon. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.